what if I could give you an 87.5% win rate strategy that could help you win thousands of dollars. However, this is not going to be one of those get rich quick strategies videos. It requires time, effort and consistency to get these high win rate results. And therefore, I'll be sharing with you the ICT Judas Swing Strategy that will help you achieve just that. By the end of this strategy breakdown video, you'll be able to understand the concepts used in this strategy such as market structure shifts, sweeps of liquidity and so on. I will show you how to implement this into your trading strategy so that you can unlock its full potential to achieve that high win rate. So if you're serious about making money, get your notes out and let's go. Alright, before diving into the ICT Judas Swing strategy using a four-step system, there are a few important concepts that you need to understand and master before we we get into it. So let's go. Firstly, the Asian session. What exactly is the Asian session? It is when the Asia markets are predominantly open and active in the trading day. The important timings to take note of is during the 8 p.m. to the 12 midnight. EST, Eastern Standard Time. This is when the market tends to range because the rest of the banks, such as the US, the European, the UK banks, are still not open. This causes the market to have low volume. Now, the reason why we use the Asian session for this strategy is because we are going to be taking advantage of the highs and the lows of the sessions for the London Judas Swing. This is where we have liquidity sitting at these levels, which is key for this strategy. For those who are not sure what I am talking about or don't even know what liquidity is or how to identify them, fret not. I will be covering it a little later in the video. So keep watching. Now, it's important to note that for this strategy, the Asian range during the 8 p.m. to the 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time period is no larger than 30 pips. If the range exceeds 30 pips, it indicates that the market is going to trend in the direction that is pushed during the Asian session and therefore making this strategy not suitable for that specific session. Now, this can be seen in an example over here. Well, you can see here that price moved up on GBP US dollar during the Asian session giving it a range of 39 pips and afterwards price continued to rally upwards without taking out the asian low as seen over here right price never came back to sweep the low now here is an example of how your asian session should actually look like you will have a range during an asian session that is less than 30 pips now the reason why we want it to be less than 30 pips again is to make sure that price is ranging and consolidating before a move ensuring that the asian highs and the lows can be used as liquidity points for us to take an entry from later on. Now, the next concept for you to understand is the market structure shift. This is a reversal pattern that occurs when price breaks above a lower high in a downtrend or when price breaks above a high low in an uptrend. When this happens, it tells us that price no longer wants to continue trending in that specific direction and shows weakness in price action. So let me show you two examples so that you understand better. Here you can see that price initially had a massive move downwards, creating lower highs and lower lows. Now, as you can see here, as price came lower, momentum slowed down and price suddenly and aggressively pushed towards the upside, breaking this lower high. This has created a market structure shift to the upside, indicating that price has intentions to reverse towards the upside. And as you can see, price has continued to rally towards the upside for an extended period of time. This is your bullish market structure shift. For this example, we have an uptrend market creating high highs and high lows as seen over here. When price dumped and broke the higher low, it indicated that price wants to reverse downwards. And as you can see, price dropped lower after the bearish market structure shift. Now, this is important to note that only after the break of structure towards the downside, then you will have your reversal point. Now, the third concept that you need to master is the ICT fair value gap. Now, to recap or to basically refresh your memory, a fair value gap is a simple three candlestick pattern. Now, a bullish fair value gap is a gap between the first candle's high and the third candle's low, as seen in the image over here. A bearish fair value gap, on the other hand, is the gap between the first candle's low and the third candle's high. It is that simple, just a regular three candlestick. 
plastic pattern. Now, what does this actually mean? It means that there are unfulfilled orders where these fair value gaps are. And that means that the orders are not yet picked up. Now, the market aims to be as balanced as possible. That means that the buyers and sellers must be in equilibrium in order for the market to be balanced. However, when a fair value gap appears, the market isn't balanced because the buyers and sellers orders do not match. Now, in order to balance the market, price needs to retrace into the gaps before continuing in its intended direction. Only then will the market be balanced. Now, a very important question that you guys commonly ask, when will a fair value gap be invalidated? Simple, when the fair value gap has been tested before. Now, if the fair value gap has been tested before, it means that the market has come back to balance the orders, therefore resulting in a fair value gap being invalid for use again. So what you want to identify are FVGs that haven't been tested before, or rather, fresh fair value gaps that have been created not long ago from the time that you look at your charts. Now, the last concept that you need to truly understand is liquidity. Now, this is a key one, so pay attention. Liquidity is price points of relative equal highs or lows where retail traders buy stops or sell stop orders reside. They can also be swing points where they have a sharp high or a sharp low. Now, there are a total of three types of liquidity to look out for. Number one, old highs and old lows. They are your old swing points. Number two, equal highs or equal lows. And number three, previous day high or lows. Think of it as support and resistance areas on your lower time frame. If you have traded support and resistance before on the lower time frame, I'm pretty sure that you would have fallen victim to one of those fake outs before. And no worries, so have I. I made that rookie mistake as well. So this is why we mark out our Asia highs and lows, as this is where price has liquidity sitting above and below them respectively. Now, we will discuss how we can use this new knowledge that we have learned to our advantage later on in the video. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into what the ICT Judas Swing strategy is. A Judas Swing is a fake out or a false move that traps breakout traders into the wrong move in the market. We will be using this strategy to enter trades in the opposite direction to make some easy money. There are two ways to use this strategy. It depends on which trading session is more convenient for you to trade. Now, let's get into the steps of the New York Open Judas Swing. Step number one, identify market trend on the 30 minutes or the 50 minute time frame before the 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. If the market is creating higher highs and higher lows, then the market trend is bullish. If the market is creating lower highs and lower lows, then the market is in a bearish trend. Now, the reason why you want to know the trend is so that you know what to look for when looking for a reversal. So for example, if you're in a downtrend, you want to be looking for buys. And if you're in an uptrend, you want to be looking for sells in this particular strategy. Everyone understands? Okay. So so step two, mark out the key liquidity levels before the 8.30 a.m. New York Open. If we are in a bullish trend, mark out the sell side liquidity at the higher lows of the trend. Now, if you're looking at a bearish trend, mark out the buy side liquidity at the lower highs of the trend. These are levels where price are magnetized to during the market volume sessions. So for step number three, wait for these levels to be taken after the 8.30 a.m. New York Open. Then what you want to do is switch to the one minute time frame to look for your confirmations. Now step number four, your confirmations. Wait for a market structure shift that leaves behind a fair value gap. And what you want to do here is place a limit order at the fair value gap with stops below or above the most recent swing high or low, targeting the nearest opposing liquidity. Now the reason why we need to have a market structure shift before we identify a fair value gap is so that we ensure that we do not get faked out by a false impulse movement. With a market structure shift, it confirms a potential reversal and therefore the fair value gap will be used as our confirmation entry criteria. Now that we know the exact steps to execute the ICT Judas Swing strategy, let's hop into the charts to look at some live examples. Here on the Euro US dollar on the 15 minute time frame, we can see that the market has had a bearish trend. So we will mark out the buy side liquidity the charts as seen over here. We have one, two, and three. Then what we will do is we will wait for one of these liquidity points to be taken after the 8.30 a.m. New York Open. Once one of these points have been taken, we will then drop down to the one minute time frame to look for a market structure shift that has left behind a fair value gap, which we have over here. Once you've identified the market structure shift and the fair value gap with a box, then what you want to do is place a sell limit at the fair value gap with stop loss above the most 
recent swing high point and target a nearby opposing liquidity resting at the lows. Now, let's see how this trade goes. And of course, just like that, take profit smashed. Moving on to the next example, which happens on the next day, the market has actually switched towards a bullish trend indicated by the market structure shift as seen over here and the higher highs and higher lows that it has been creating. So we will instead be looking out for sell side liquidity on the charts. So as you can see on the charts here, I have marked out three sell side liquidities. And now all we have to do is wait for any one of these liquidity points to be taken after the 8.30 AM New York Open. Price took two of these liquidity levels. So remember, once price has swept these liquidity levels, what you want to do is hop onto the one minute time frame. So let's do that. So now once we are on the one minute time frame, what you want to do is look for a market structure shift that has left behind a fair value gap towards the upside. And then we will look to place our buy limit at the start of the fair value gap with stop loss below the most recent swing low as seen on the charts over here and target the nearest opposing liquidity as marked out in the charts over here. All right, so let's see how this trade plays out. And of course, price flew to our take profit with very little drawdown. Now, let's move on to the London session Judas swing. The key difference in the steps are to do with time. Instead of the 8.30 a.m. EST, you are going to focus on the 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For liquidity points, you are going to reference the Asian range highs and lows. So let's dive straight into the example. On the Euro US dollar chart on the 50 minute time frame, we can see that we have a bullish trend that recently turned bearish as seen from the market structure shift before the New York Open. So we will mark out the sell side liquidity on the charts as seen over here. As you can see on the charts, I have marked out two points. The first line on the top is going to be your Asian low, and the low at the bottom is your sell side liquidity low. So all we have to do right now is wait for the liquidity point to be taken after 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time London kill zone. Once this liquidity point has been taken, we will then drop down to the one minute time frame right now to look for a market structure shift. So once we have identified the market structure shift, what we will look for is for a bullish fair value gap to form. So what I'll do here is I'll mark it out with a box and same thing. What we will do is that we will place a buy limit order at the start of the fair value gap with stops below the most recent swing low. Target the opposing buy side liquidity. Let's see how this trade plays out. Of course, it almost hit our stop loss, but eventually it pumped back up and smashed our take profit. Now, this is why it is extremely important to give your stop loss a bit of breathing room so that it allows your trade to play out. Now, this is especially important if you are scalping on the lower time frames. So, now that we have gone through the two different variations of this strategy, how can we make this strategy even better? Here are three tips to further increase the already high win rate strategy. Tip number one, avoid trading high impact news hours. Price tends to be very manipulated during these high impact news sessions. To be safe and not to lose your capital, you should not be trading during these high impact news sessions. Instead, you want to sit on the sidelines and wait for a high probability setup for you to come the following day. Tip number two, give your trade more room to breathe. If you see that a stop loss below a recent low or a recent high is roughly around in the pip range of two to three pips, consider giving yourself a larger stop loss so that your trade has more room to breathe. This will allow your trades to properly play out over a longer period of time. In addition, it decreases the chances of you being stopped out by a trade because of your small stop loss and instead have a higher chance of you hitting your full take profit. So now moving on to the last tip, tip number three have a daily bias. If you treat in accordance to an accurate daily bias, your win rate should increase by 10%. Now, just to be clear, you do not need a daily bias to trade this strategy. But if you do have a daily bias on top of this strategy, it will be a plus point anyways, and you will have a higher win rate. So that wraps up exactly how to execute the ICT Judas Swing strategy along with trading psychology tips to help you achieve that 87.5% win rate. If you would like more of such videos, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with the latest trading strategies to help you achieve your trading goals. And if you're looking for a community of 30,000 traders worldwide where we trade together every single day twice a day on YouTube live stream make sure to click the link in our description below to join our telegram group to keep updated as to when we go live we also give free signals in our telegram group every single day so that you guys can make money with us for free so if you're serious about making money then I should see you inside the telegram group see you